Welcome back. This week we've got scientists exploring previously unstudied forest in Uganda, an homage to two lost species of beetles, a mushroom with a smelly name, and why we sent a turtle to the World Chess Hall of Fame. Let's go. But first, a moment to remember our lost invertebrate friends. Unfortunately, friends, new news is not always good news in the natural history world. Let us take a moment to remember two species which have recently been declared extinct. Stefan's riffle beetle of Arizona and the Tatum cave beetle of Kentucky both sat in protection limbo for decades, with population numbers dwindling in the face of human development and drought from climate change. Here at the Field Museum, we are proud to house the type specimen of the Tatum cave beetle, the individual that was used to describe the rest of its group. To both of your species, I'm sorry we let you go extinct, but I hope by sharing your story we can encourage you, our viewers, to champion an imperiled species. Thank you to those entomologists who contributed their knowledge to these discoveries and to the field for housing some members of their species. Field museum specimens, not mere pawns in chess exhibit. It's not unusual for field museum scientists to send specimens to other museums and research institutions. Last year, we loaned out 42,000 specimens all over the world. But for perhaps the first time, a group of specimens were sent to be on display in a new exhibit about chess. The World Chess Hall of Fame in St. Louis, Missouri has a new exhibit called Animal, Vegetable, Mineral, and it showcases highlights of the Dr. George and Vivian Dean chess set collections. There are 37 sets on display, and each one of those is either based off of elements of the natural world or was created using natural materials. A couple highlights include a set with carved insect pieces from 1790 that were scientifically accurate enough to be identified to the species level. There's also a set made from polished tortoiseshell from the early 1900s, and displayed alongside those sets are field museum specimens. This exhibit aims to celebrate the natural wonders of the world, and it brings art, nature, and craft together under the umbrella of a globally recognized pastime. After all, chess has been around for about 1,500 years and is played all over the world. Even wizards like chess. Although these chess sets were created for the purpose of entertainment and display, they've become important historical artifacts in that they represent the ways in which people have interacted with various natural materials in the past, especially considering many of the materials used to make the sets are now limited in availability, or in the case of the tortoiseshell, are now endangered species. This exhibit will run until March 2017, so if you're in St. Louis, get a taste of science and chess history in one go. Checkmate. First vertebrate survey conducted in northern Ugandan forest. Recently, field museum researchers and associates Holly Lutz, Julian Kerbis, and Josh Engel spent a month in the northern parts of Uganda with collaborators from Makiri University in Kampala. Their goal was to study the birds and mammals of two remote highland regions in the far northern parts of the country. Field correspondent Emily Grassley has more on the story. Thanks, Emily. The scientist's first stop was Mount Moran Goal, and was only the third time an inventory of birds and mammals had been conducted in the area in the whole history of the world. Golly! The next stop was Goro Aru Forest Preserve, which protects the Ugandan side of the Imatong Mountains that flew into South Sudan. Although a field museum ornithologist visited the South Sudan side in 1977, this recent expedition was the first biological survey in the montane forest on the Ugandan side. The field team collected a number of species for Holly's research, which investigates the microbial communities, aka germ parties, of those specimens, primarily bats. Her past research has examined things like parasite diversity and how diseases like malaria spread between birds. That's right, bird malaria and bat germ parties. Thanks, Emily. Always exciting to learn more about- Oh, not done! Now we're here in northern Vietnam with field curator Petra Searwald, who's collecting millipedes and arachnids with collaborators from Alabama, Italy, and Brazil. They're especially interested in studying the diversity of those millipede families and the genetic relationship of tarantulas. They also held a workshop focused on training eight young students from Vietnam, Cambodia, and Indonesia about proper specimen collecting techniques. Now we can go back to you. Wow, Ooh, okay, thanks Emily. I uh, appreciate your dedication to the job. Now let's go to a story about mushrooms. A mushroom for Chicago. New species discoveries are always exciting, but even more so when they're named for your city and also you can eat them. 
mycologists, aka mushroom experts, from the Field Museum, the Chicago Botanic Garden, and Northwestern University have named this bright yellow chanterelle found in the region Canthrellus chicagoensis, in honor of the great city of Chicago. And as mentioned, it is edible, and it doesn't happen to come with any psychedelic effects either. The field's Patrick Leacock tells us there are more than a thousand species of mushrooms in the Chicago area, with new ones being discovered thanks to the productive collaborations between professionals and amateur enthusiasts alike. The name Chicago is from a Menominee word for a place where smelly onions grow. Chicago, or skunk place. How endearing. Is your city named after a foul odor? Let us know in the comments below. Hey, and thanks for watching this episode of Natural News from the Field Museum. You know, when I was doing all this research about chess, I came across a lot of interesting chess sets, like one that could be played by four people and another one that was three-dimensional. So I want to know, if you guys know of any interesting sets, let us know in the comments below. And be sure to check out our next episode on the Brain Scoop, which is about an amazing laser. Stay tuned. <laughs>